We now welcome the number 10 ranked UFC middleweight contender in the world, Uriah Hall. Uriah, thank you for the time, sir. So, man. We will take the first set of questions from Gabriel Gonzalez with Cage Side Press. So, even though they can't see me, I got to... No, 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 they can see you from this. Hello, Uriah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Uriah, first off, I imagine it's not easy being the guy who's at the spoil the last night of Anderson Silva. Can you just talk about separating all that and just being able to go out there and do your job to win the fight? What? Say that again? What? How do you separate all of the talk about, you know, spoiling the last night of Anderson and just go out there and do your job to win? By not listening to the media. You've had a bunch of fights scrapped amidst the pandemic. Can you describe the relief to finally be about to go back out there? I didn't mind the pandemic too much. I uh, went into isolation, hang out at my gym. Didn't hang out with a lot of people. I think it was a blessing in disguise. Can you just talk about a little bit, just making the readjustment? You know, you were so close to getting the fight with Romero. You were on the last, you know, pretty much the last stretch to fight Jacare in May. Just having to restart another camp each time. This is so fucking weird, man. What the fuck? I can't do this. Can I look at the screen or something? Or who the fuck am I talking to? This is so weird. On the screen, it just, it just shows you. What yeah, the fuck? You can't this is so that. fucking weird. All right. What's the question? <laughs> uh, repeat Hello, the question. Can you hear me? Yeah, repeat the question, please. Just what was it like having to restart so many camps this year with Jacare and Romero? Now this one? Um, it was fine, man. Uh, I went into camp. Um, I've been training since last year, November. So right before the pandemic got out of hand, I was in. Dallas, Airbnb, staying already, just staying ready. And uh, we, we got the call for our first fight. We went into camp. Um, yeah, it was devastating, but as a martial artist, you know, our job is to stay ready, stay prepared. So that's it. You know, you, you just stay ready. That's, that's the whole key factor. Thank you. We will take our next set of questions from Danny Segura with MMA Junkie. I obviously this is a a very big fight, but you fought some of the biggest names at 185 pounds uh, before. Um, wh how would you grade this fight? Do you think this is the biggest fight of your career with Anderson Silva? Uh, yeah, it's one of the biggest fights. Um, Anderson Silva is a legend, so uh, I'm just excited to go out there and uh, go up against the guy that I. I watch growing up, you know. To me, I made it. I say, yeah, look at it for sure. And uh, right now, Adesanya doesn't really have a, a clear uh, next title challenger. You're obviously on a nice uh, two fight win streak. Do you think uh, an impressive showing against Anderson Silva could put you in that mix? Yeah, uh, Adesanya is picking his fight, man. He he sees what I see. He sees the hole in all these guys, and he's already picking Camier. He's looking for easy fights. Yeah, I said it. So. He, I know why he's picking certain fights, but I'm dynamic, and especially with the gym that I'm at right now, I'm focused, laser focused. So it's a matter of time, you know. I'm just going to play the politic card, and just whoever the UFC needs me to beat, and or whoever the UFC thinks can beat me, and uh, get to the top. Yeah. In your opinion, um, I guess what do you think uh, other adversaries that have fought Adesanya are missing to to beat him? What's the key to dethrone the champ? I'm not going to tell you that. Okay. <laughs> and uh, you just mentioned that, uh, you know, you, you saw Anderson Silva, um, you know, as you were coming up. Uh, if you could describe him in, in one word, what would it be and why? Uh, he's just fluent, man. The way he moves, the way he fights, you know, he's in the moment. And a lot of people don't really understand that dynamic. That's why he says he doesn't care about the whole fighting thing it's not about fighting uh, people can't understand that concept because it's the moment when you're in there letting go it's like training you have to let go but the problem with that is you know when you have refs that don't know their job right or judges who aren't educated properly it takes a risk factor in there and then you're more worried so you can't really let go but you can just go out there and fight someone 
it's kind of hard to explain, but I know exactly what he's talking about in the martial arts world, because that's all you have in that moment. Those 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, that's all you really have to really express yourself. So I get where he's coming from. All right. Thank you, Ryan. Peace luck on, on Saturday. Thank you. We will take our next questions from Bruno Carvalho with UOL. Hi, Ryan. How are you? Good. What's going on? I'm doing good, too. Uh, all right. Uh, what means to you fight uh, against Anderson Silva and probably his last fight? Uh, it's a fight, man. It's just it's work. You, you just show up to work and you do your job and you get out. That's it. I mean, obviously, he's a legend and I respect him, but it's a fight. There's no. We all look at him in awe and all that, but it's a fight. There's no, what else do you want me to say? It's a fight. It's like you show up for work, it's work, right? And you do your job and you get out, that's it. Fight. Okay, okay. And both of you has a, a fight style very similar. So do you prepare something different to fight against him? Well, I'm not gonna tell you that, but <laughs> what kind of question are these, man? Um, you just have fun, man. Just the squash I have is on Saturday. Okay, thanks. And the last two guys I had that gave interview were awesome. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take the uh, next questions from James Conlon with RCB Radio Sport Ireland. James, please go ahead. Okay, we will take our next questions from Sumik Dada with Sports Kita. Hey, Uriah. Hey, Uriah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, so, first of all, welcome back and hope you're doing well. Thank you. And, uh, so, Israel Adesanya has been very vocal about you. He said that uh, if you stick to your basics for this fight, you'll beat Anderson Silva. And he also mentioned you a couple of times in the lead up to his fight against Paulo Costa. So what is your response to all that comments from the champ? Okay. <laughs> Thanks for the advice, bro. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, so obviously this is a big fight for you, given this is Anderson Silva's last fight. If you see yourself, where do you see yourself with the win? And what would be your goals be from there on? Where do I see myself with the win? And what would be my goals from there on? Yes, uh, with the win over Silva this week. Um, the rich, rich. Uh, hopefully, you know, I, listen, I want the champ. That's it. I just get the sport. I see where it's going. I want the champ. Give me the champ. That's it. Uh, last question for me. Uh, your coach said that you're ready to play the villain in Anderson Silva's retirement fight. What are your predictions for this fight? And how do you plan on spoiling his retirement? You said play the villain? Yeah, your coach mentioned that. <laughs> um, I don't know, take him out. I mean, my game plan is to win. Uh, just go out there and win, man. That's it. That's it. Well, uh, thank you so much, and good luck for the fight, sir. Thank you. Who comes up with these questions? <laughs> we will take our next questions from Cote Cruz with the Four to Win podcast. Oh, sorry, he dropped out. We will take our next questions from Pablo Santa Maria with Noti MMA Ecuador. Ecuador. Hey, Raya, can you hear me? Arriba la raza. Oh, wait, that's Mexico. What's up, man? Uh, okay, the first thing I want to ask you is if at some point did you feel frusta frustrated when uh, Jacarea and Joel withdraw from the fights? I couldn't feel frustrated for Jacare because COVID happened, but... You know, I wish them well. Uh, Yoel, on the other hand, I kind of knew, I, I have a really 99.9% .9 feeling that it was because John Jones was leaving and they had the same manager. And he wanted to get out of the, the fight with me by coming up with some BS shit about his eye. And, you know, 205 for him might be a lot easy. We've seen him struggle to make 85. So that was his way out, you know? They have the same manager. It was like, all right, man, Jones about to lose and leave the division and Two months, you know, uh, why don't you just get out of it this way? You don't have to hurt your career. That's what I think. 
That was more frustrating than um, Jacare. Jacare happened. It sucked. I wished him well. But I think you will just, um, yeah. I get it. Uh, do you face any difficulties uh, training in under these COVID situations? It was hard finding some a spa, a training partners without, or do you have all the under control in your I got gym? Control. I got a control. <laughs> okay. So, you want to elaborate on that? I mean, uh, you Joel is. No, no, okay. Uh, it was okay. Uh, Joel was a ranked fighter, and when they offer you Anderson Silva, you doped or you said yes without a doubt? You said doped? Doped uh, about your rival because you obviously was going to face Joel Romero, who is a ranked fighter, and oh, Anderson okay. is not on the rank. So you're saying if it made sense to take Anderson. Uh -huh. Well, because he's not ranked. Um, both guys have a name. Both guys have a reputation. Uh, personally, for me, Anderson has been someone I've idolized for years. So to me, that's a trophy fight. It's a championship fight to me in my mind. Um, I personally felt I made it. It could have went great for me. It can go great for me either way. I mean, if we're going to talk politics, uh, a win over OL will put me in a title contingency. Um, a win over Anderson Silva would... I don't know, reclaim something, puts me in with the top five, maybe. So either way, it's, it's beneficial. Okay, I get it. Uh, thank you very much, Raya, and good luck on your fight. Thank you. And we will take our last set of questions from Ezekiel Berganzi with Somos MMA. Hey, Uriah, how are you? Hey, what's up, man? A lot of Spanish and Brazilians. <laughs> how, how do you feel knowing that the fight could uh, put you on the UFC spotlight if you got a, a very outstanding finish against Anderson Silva, who is probably in his last fight on his career on or in the UFC. How would I feel if a win over Anderson would put me on the spotlight with the UFC? Yes, if you got an outstanding finish against Anderson Silva, do you think that the UFC could put you on a spotlight in the middleweight division? <laughs> That's a funny question. Um, well, listen, I'm not going to sit here and say the UFC plays favoritism. The way the UFC works, if you do a good job, if you go out there and you talk some shit, if you beat motherfuckers ass fashionably, you're somebody. I'm not going to leave it up to the UFC to do that. You know, I'm going to go out there and do what I'm supposed to do. And whatever happens, happens. I know my goals. I know what I'm going to do. I'm not waiting for them to make a decision for me. I'm going to use the opportunity that I have, which is to go up against my opponent. And um, my, my goal, the same way his goal is to win, is to win. That's it. And after that, you know, I'm looking to gain the top five. Uh, Whoever is in the top five, because I'm, my ultimate goal right now is to fight the champ. I just want the champ. That's it. And do you think that if you beat Anderson, you need a, a one more fight to get a title shot against Israel Adesanya? Because everybody thought that Charlotte Carrier was going to get the title shot, but he was defeated uh, by Robert Whittaker. And everybody's talking about a rematch between Adesanya and Whitaker. So do you think that maybe you can have a, a title eliminator fight for getting a shot? With the way the UFC works, bro, God fucking knows what's going to happen. All I got to say is I'm just going to stay ready. A win over Anderson is always going to be a good thing. Um, wherever it puts me, if someone gets injured, I'll be ready. If they say, hey, you need to fight this person again, I'll still be ready. If it makes sense, I'll do it. If it doesn't, of course, I'm going to try to fight it. But again, the goal we made the same is to become world champion. And do you think that entertain, uh, in MMA, entertainment is way more important than sports? And what do you think about that? Ooh. I think that entertainment draws a big audience. There's a good and bad with it. It's good because it sells the fight. You go back in time and you look at a guy like Muhammad Ali of how he sells the fight, how he's trash talking, all that stuff. You want to see him. He's entertaining. He's funny. 
and then he goes out there and performs his skill set, whether it's Conor McGregor or what's that Colby dude. And yeah, it brings other people in. It brings fans, like you know, um, actors or broaden the horizon of it. The thing I don't like with that is just it 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 misconstrues a lot of things where a lot of people don't understand the dynamics of certain fighters where it becomes picky and choosy. It's like saying the prelims. No one fucking watches the prelims. It's like who watches the prelims unless you know somebody on the prelims. So it generates favoritism. So there's a balance with it. The entertainment is good, but the problem that I have with the media and entertainment system is that, you know, no one cares anymore. It's just, let's just get the story out. We don't care what hurts. It's almost like if somebody from my team or me get tested positive for COVID, it's like, boom, let's just fucking just, you know, it's like no one gives a fuck anymore. And that's why I have a hard time with the media. I personally, genuinely hate, and hate is a powerful word, the media. So I'm picky and choosy with that. But hey, I can't control it. I'm just going to do my job the best that I can. But yeah, that's it. Thank you and good luck on Saturday. Be black. Thank you so much, Uriah. That is all the time we have for you, sir. Thank you.